It's probably the hardest thing that I've ever worked on. I think of it as sort of a work of art. It's something hundreds of people created. It's a wonderful texture and depth to this world. It was the most work, it was the most difficult, but it was the most fun, it was the most rewarding. And of all projects, it's the one that I'm the most proud of. Yo, oh, let's start the show! Welcome to Court Killers. I'm going to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution so that you have the information. You. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You have the information you need to be able to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, on whatever device you want. I am Tom Merritt. And Brian, explain to me why we're hearing dead Jim Henson. I, okay, first of all, he doesn't go by, that's not his given name. That's a colloquial <laughs> thing they call him around the ghost campfire. Uh, but yeah, that's Jim Henson talking about The Dark Tower, a movie that was well-beloved by its creator, but uh, was not the box office explosion. <laughs> Dark Crystal. Wait, what did I say? The Dark you Tower? The Dark Tower. Uh, you just you know got what? Dark Tower out of the break. The tower's made of crystal. That's the big reveal at the end. They get there, and they're like, the Dark Tower is a dark crystal the whole time. <laughs> Idris Elba's Thank like... Side. Yeah, he's just out, like... Man, guns, uh, shooting. Doesn't even make sense. Uh, but, yeah. but the important part is that it's coming to Netflix, uh, uh, some kind of sequel. I, it's a prequel, so, so, actually. Uh, whatever. It's more content. It's I'm very excited. As long as there's Skeksis and the other ones... Uh, Darker uh, crystals, more Skeksis. Yes! And as long and as will, there's uh, the dude that goes, mm, that one. Yeah, uh, a lot of that. Uh, that is not Fraser Kane that does that, but this is Fraser Kane right here from Universe Hello. Today, joining us on Cord Killers. How's it going, man? Good. Thanks for having me back, guys. Oh, heck yeah, man. Thank you so much. All the way from uh, sunny Canada. Yeah. Yeah, I was just showing that. We've, we've had the worst winter in 60 years out here. And now we've had, we've got like day after day of sunshine coming at us. I've been outside nonstop. It's the best. That is that's, awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. And uh, and so no more vitamin D supplements? You, you're, nope. Uh... Nope. <laughs> nope. You're good. Why, why are you talking about vitamin D, Tom? Because <laughs> my doctor prescribed me to wear shorts. <laughs> She's like, look, you can right, take first a vitamin all, D supplement, or you can admit you live in effing California, Merritt, and go outside in the sun. I'm, I'm going to yeah. out you. You were actually prescribed to wear shorts oh, and yeah, no, no shirt, but then <laughs> but then, like <laughs> like an oh, alcoholic on death's door is just like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to have to do that. I'm just going to – you're not going to get the no shirt. <laughs> no, I won't do yeah. that to my neighbors. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, before we get to our primary target, though, real quickly, uh, Fraser, you've got uh, some awesome stuff coming up in August because there is a solar eclipse here in North America. Yeah, so as people probably know, the uh, total solar eclipse, the Great American Eclipse, is going to be happening on August 21st, 1st, 2017, and it's going to be crossing from Oregon all the way down through, like, many states to South Carolina, and... Uh, it's going to be a total solar eclipse. It's going to be one of those most amazing things to see in the sky. You've absolutely got to go. If you haven't already, make plans. Get yourself to the eclipse path of, of totality and watch this happen. Uh, we're going to be in St. Louis. Um, we've got a, a hotel that we've booked, but it's, it's totally booked. I apologize. We, so we so no you're not spaces. advertising so much as bragging I, right I'm now. I'm not advertising. Yeah, exactly. I'm humble bragging. <laughs> we, we're totally booked up. But no, I'm nagging you, the viewer, to remember that this is going to be one of those transcendent experiences of your life. Now, this isn't going to be like the last total... time astronomers told us to fix our clocks with the Y2K bug. This one's real, right? This, yeah, one's, yeah, exactly. okay. this one's real. So, uh, you know, if you haven't already, at the very least... Get your hands on some kind of eclipse glasses, some way to protect your eyes during the eclipse. Figure out where the eclipse path is going to get closest to you and plot some plans to make your way up to cross the eclipse path and, and give it a watch. You've only got now three months. Yeah. Away, August 21st, and, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now there is going to be another one in 2024. So this will be like this will whet your appetite. And then 2024, you're going to come back around and watch another one so uh enjoy you lucky americans so watch what you <laughs> want the eclipse where you want when as long as it's on the wants. eclipse path and when <laughs> no. you want as long as it's august 21st yeah. Yeah. At, at the moment of totality right yeah yeah exactly i you know i so i just came back from the united states i was actually uh in brian's neck of the woods and i was just 
binge watching and gorging on American television. It was oh, great. that's right. For you, uh, yeah. we're like Golden Corral. You come on yeah, down, and you're like, wait, all of it? I can have all of it? And what is all this stuff? Yeah. YouTube Red. I kept saying, you should get a copy of YouTube Red. But I couldn't bring that home with me. No. Yeah. No, you yeah, couldn't. Yeah. Uh, someday. Someday, maybe. But let's get on to our primary target. Now, we talked before about Facebook's plans for original shows. Uh, first, they were expected in April. Then April came, and they were expected in mid-June. Now we're getting closer to mid-June. Recode reports they've been put off to July or August. How are we feeling about social networks becoming video channels? we got a few other things going on here. I mean, uh, Facebook's have announced a deal with Major League Baseball. They've announced a deal with ESL to stream the Intel Extreme Masters events and a few other uh, esports things. And even like musically, which parents ask your kids, musically is a, a video sharing uh, app that's used by tweens for the most part. Musically talking to Viacom and NBC about making original shows that encourage community participation. Brian, I mean, is is this the future? Is is it social networks become our new TV networks? You know, uh, so so this is one of those moments that I think it's a good idea to take the thousand foot view because we are tied up in well, Facebook means this to me, uh, Twitter means that to me, but it doesn't matter what any of these things mean to us. Um, uh, to be honest. I totally thought we would have seen more success with all of these programs faster. I would have thought that in a place where everybody's already talking about the baseball game, that's a good place to bring the baseball game so that they can watch it there. However, I've been trying to resolve this this uh, disconnect between my expectations and reality because the reality is it's moving extremely slowly. We're getting very few people watching. They're not super – people aren't flocking to it. And if I'm going to conjure a guess, it's going to be because uh, – Every time I mention that the number one way I watch television or movie is is on a desktop computer, it gets looks from everyone. So millennials are like, why aren't you just watching it on your phone? Uh, old people are like, no, movies go in the TV room. Uh, and I think a lot of people want don't want to watch – if you're on a mobile device – uh, I assume that you're either watching it on a postage stamp size thing and keeping an eye on chat or you're watching it full screen, in which case you can't do the chat at the same time. Uh, if you're watching it uh, on your desktop, you're weird and, and alone. Nobody watches on laptops. And then if you're watching on TV, you're asking, why do I want to go through Twitter or for, through Facebook? Why don't I just watch this on cable? That's that's well, the best guess I have. You're young at heart because the numbers we've seen is that the younger demographics are the ones watching on desktop and mobile, and that's where the social networks think they have an advantage. Fraser, what do you think of this? Well, I mean, whenever I hear about any media coming up at all, my I my response is always like, if it's good, I'll enjoy it, and if it's bad, I won't. Right? That's it. That's the beginning sure. and the end of that. And so in this case, it is it is content that will be delivered by a different mechanism. Everyone's got Facebook. Hey, everyone, you should watch this new show and it's going to be available. Click this link and then you click that link and, whoa, you happen to be in Facebook, but now you're watching this show. And if the show's good, then you'll want to watch another episode. And if it's not, then the next time that link comes across your bow, you will avoid it. And, you know, same thing with Musical.ly. So, I mean, each of these platforms – is a distribution channel and is also a you know like a content marketing platform at the same time and and will distribute the content but i don't know it's like it's all just seamless now it's sort of disappearing the in-between spaces in between what is the show that you watch and how you find out about it you know and especially with so much of it being sports content content in the early days, which again makes sense for live viewing because that's what you want. But in general, where in day-to-day -day life do most people see sports on a screen? It's always almost exclusively in the background at either social events, at a bar, or even at home, in which case, you know, you picture dad sitting on the couch. Very rarely do I picture a dad nowadays with the game on giving the game his full attention. Not even you, Tom, uh, for your beloved St. Louis teams. Uh, do, do you watch live and give it your full attention or are you doing well, other stuff? I, I, I wonder. I, I would like to know. I would like to know the facts behind that, because, yeah, uh, a lot of people do watch sports in the background. But I also know people who are true sports fans and don't hold me up as that. Uh, true sports fans do give it their whole attention. And back in the day when I was fanatic about baseball, I would sit on that couch and watch every pitch and only pull my attention away during the commercial break. So they exist, but it's a fair question of like, 
how many people are doing that and how many people would just like have it on when they're out to eat or waiting for something just to kind of keep an eye on the game. What if this was an emperor's clothes moment where everybody only saw one number and that was total number of households that had the game on for years and years and years. And now that we have a chance for like, if you're really watching, you could click this button and watch. If you're not really watching, then then you won't bother to do it. And we're discovering just how many people had sports on that aren't really watching. Uh, or maybe had it on because they had a cable package and it was placed in a convenient way where they're like, oh, I guess I'll just put on the game, right? Right. Uh, and that, and on their smartphone, suddenly it's like, oh, well, I have this wealth of things that my friends are telling me about and it's not the game. I, I, because yeah, live, live is, is baseball and sports and, and we talk about that a lot, but it's also award shows. Uh, it's also a few live, uh, performances, music, stuff like that. Coachella was a huge live event. So I don't know. I look at this and I think all of the networks are working really hard to figure out how to gracefully make a transition that doesn't undermine their current audience so they can be in a package on the internet. What if by the time they make that graceful transition, the eyeballs of the young and growing demographics of the 1834 are like, oh, but we're watching this new show on Twitter and on Facebook, and we don't care about paying for a bundle. We'll we'll just, you know, we'll we'll watch Game right. of Thrones later, whatever. But I think that's the problem, right? Is that you know all of these network, all of these old school networks, be it baseball, be it NBC, you know, Fox, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, um, they have this built-in infrastructure that that grew up in the olden days, right? Um, and then there's all these new distribution platforms, and they're trying to take their media that was created in this old distribution era and try to bring it into these new platforms, be it Facebook, be it Snapchat, Musical.ly, whatever. And the the problem is, I think, that that they're not going to make enough revenue in this new platform using the kinds of methods of making money that have grown up organically. It's going to be the pure play stuff like what's happening on Twitch or what's happening on YouTube where you've got creators that have figured out a way to cobble together a business strategy, perhaps some kind of modern rogues hmm. that are then able to be successful and survive on this on this new platform. I I can just, you know, I can just imagine like baseball kind of going, well, we can make ourselves visible on Facebook. And then, you know, they only make 1% of the amount of money that they're expecting to make their existing creaking infrastructure survive and then go like, you know, there are, yeah, exactly. There are executives at say discovery channel that make more than my entire organization does. And yet, you know, so that's, I think that is, so that is the problem. And until and so can there be organic content from these different places? Is there something that can grow up and exist on Musical.ly? Is there something that can appear on Facebook and become a popular show using Facebook only? Anytime anyone tries to take a thing they do in some other form and bring it into one of these platforms, I'm skeptical. You, you know, I got to tell you, man, uh, I'm glad that there are more uh, players at, at the game, you know, with Facebook uh, getting in and, and stealing away some opportunities from Twitter or whatever. But as a content producer, I, I am unfairly prejudiced, totally biased against Facebook. I even if I had let's say let's say they came up and they're like modern rogues, the best thing ever. We want to uh, we, we want to uh, showcase you and make it a big, big deal. Like I've just been burned with so many times of, of building up follower bases and then being charged for the privilege of accessing the exact groups of people that I assembled that I, I don't know. Like I would be very leery of it for some reason. And, and there's nothing but my own personal bias coming through in this. Mm. Just, Could yeah, Facebook just, come up with a new they're, they're, sport? Oh, I didn't hear right? either of you. Say again. Oh, I was going to say, could Facebook come up with a new sport? Right, start with a curling league or a or a or a uh, you know croquet league from badminton league from day one, an esports league, it's e and then build yeah, it up yeah. from there, or even their right. own baseball league. Well, and and that's what they're doing. They're they're saying, look, I mean, it would be silly to start a new baseball league because there are millions of people who will watch this, right? Even even if the, the audience declines, it's still huge. But esports is growing. 
And this is the time to get in on that and then bring it over and say, hey, we the people who watch this are here. Well, and keep uh, in mind, keep in mind, who are the who are a very likely audience are oftentimes uh, teenagers and younger, all of the uh, most of whom have their own screens. But they, they would have to lobby for permission to put it on the big screen from their mm -hmm. parent figures who won't understand this crazy esports thing anyway, which only makes it an, a more obvious match from that. It seems like they should be pushing harder in that direction. You know what we should be pushing harder in the direction of, Brian, is getting us to that 1,850 patrons that we need to break up the spoiler and time feed into accessible bite-sized chunks that can fit on these smaller screens. Yeah, Even man. Though they might be audio in a lot of cases. As a matter of fact, we already got our first email from our first volunteer. I went ahead and looped in uh, both you and Bryce, I, actually I think. I think that was our second or third volunteer email. We got oh, was? Oh, yes. oh, wow. So that's the first one I saw. We already have people lining up. The idea is, is of course, if you're a longtime listener, you know that on It's Spoiler in Time, we take you through our impressions of shows that we're watching as we're watching them. Uh, they're, they're not real time. We don't watch every Everything exactly when it comes out and we don't post everything exactly when it comes out and so there are people who watch it years later and it's the hard as hell to find our impressions of all these things so we are going to start an initiative all we need is 1850 patrons and we are 1724 of the way there what 136 more people 26 and 126 yeah i can add uh 126 more people and we are good to go man uh, yeah, we just need 126 of you right now. Patreon.com slash cord killers. Sign up. You are one of I'm them. I'm in. I'm already, I'm, I'm already one of you. You're already in. So yeah, you're, too late. That's you're in the masses. All right. Uh, let's talk about how to watch all this stuff. And uh, staying in the, the sports arena, uh, a lot of sports fans have been wondering, hey, when's ESPN going to be easier to get? I keep telling you if it's worth $20 to you. You can get ESPN right now as Sling TV, and it's available on all your platforms. But ESPN uh, is in trouble. It's realizing a decline in its subscribers, and that is going to hurt its ability to sell ads if it doesn't do something. So ESPN is going to offer a single viewership number that combines their traditional cable and satellite uh, numbers with the live streams that you get from a Sling TV or a PlayStation View and its Watch ESPN app and I think this is the most interesting to some of us, out-of-home viewers, when they're in a bar or a restaurant, you will now possibly be included in the ratings as well. This is done in partnership with Nielsen. ESPN estimated if they had done this in Q1, it would have boosted its numbers by 12%. Uh, and it's estimated that ESPN has lost 12 million subscribers since 2011. So, so in all seriousness, uh, I, I'd like to picture the board meeting where it's like, we got serious problems, gentlemen. Our numbers are down, way down. I want to hear solutions. Someone's like, uh, we could uh, offer more attractive packages. We could lower our prices. We could give free trials. Wait a minute. What if we change the way we calculate the numbers? Then it <laughs> won't be a problem count at everyone? all. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, although having said that, it is uh, uh, number one, there's no way this is a good sign for, for ESPN's numbers. Uh, they've known that this is a more accurate metric for a very long time. But if your numbers are huge and stable, it would be beneath you to engage in this kind of rejiggering of the numbers. And it would only call into question like, hey, why are you guys doing that? Their numbers have to be so bad that they're taking the double hit of bad numbers and the 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 very public facing reorientation of changing the way they qualify the numbers that they give out. Um that's not great. However, having said that, uh, the, the reasons for it are not great. I do think it's great that they're counting everyone. I think it's great that they're counting people at bars. I think uh, we, we were talking about this before the show, Tom. I think that it's not unfair and not unreasonable for them to charge uh, essentially a ticket fee, like basically pay-per-view style thing, but because because during game days, uh, bars make more money because more people are there. I think advertisers, it's worth if you're going to place a big fat uh, Miller Lite ad in the middle of, of a cards game, then you're going to want to know what percentage of the audience is literally within 10 feet of a Miller bar, a Miller tap at any time. Right. Uh, so, so I think it's overall good, terrible that they're in a situation that they have to make this very painful, terrible for them. Not for us. We think it's great. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> what if they switch to esports? What if they just started running, you know, well, and they're doing it. ESPN has League of Legends carry esports. dead. What if they had the football players play League of Legends? <laughs> Why Would not? Would that do better? 
<laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time that uh, uh, I went to E3 and there was all these EA Sports posters up promising that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was going to take on? Um, oh shoot, it was uh, one of the one of the current champs. Uh, Crap, I, can't, I forget what it was, but it was like, there's no way. there. And, and sure enough, there on the floor, they had a boxing ring set up and everything. I was like, what? There's actually, they're, they're, they got these two legends they are going to fight. And of course, uh, uh, then when it came time, they they were playing the game versions of themselves. Well, the, the NBA the is doing it right. The NBA has an electronic version of its league starting where each mm -hmm. franchise is drafting professional esports players to play NBA 2K uh, on game consoles professionally under their name. So there'll be a Golden State Warriors real life basketball team and a Golden State Warriors esports team. What if we uh, can use that Elon and Musk neural lace and like jam it into the football players' heads and then have the esports players drive the football players around like oh, robots? Man, yeah, that's the next evolution right there. It's gotta Wait, be. You, you, you no longer have to wait for the uh, the graphics to render. That's thinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I don't know that I would cast this as such a dire move by ESPN. A, lo a lot of networks, ABC had already done this. I know ABC and ESPN are the same company, but uh, NBC wants to do it, but is critical of how Nielsen calculates this. I think all the networks want to have this larger number because it means they can sell more ads uh, and they don't have to differentiate the prices. And right now the prices are still historically higher for regular viewing. So if they can kind of bring some of that money into digital, which right now is under monetized, then they're going to be happy about that. But I don't disagree with you, Brian, that ESPN is being forced to do things because it is worried. And it's, you know, the fact that it had to lay off a bunch of people is evidence of that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to say that in the end, I'm hoping it'll be a good thing. I mean, anything like this is a significant crack in the dam that says, hey, we're giving up on Nielsen old school, real time eyeballs watching DVR shifted or whatever. Like all of that matters so less and less and less. Now, uh, those of you who are like, I don't really care about any of this because I don't watch sports. Well, there are companies angling towards you, too. Variety says Viacom CEO Bob Bakish told the J.P. Morgan Global Technology Media and Telecom Conference in Boston that Viacom is in advanced talks with one pay TV company. Now, the implication is it's an online streaming company like a PlayStation viewer sling. He didn't name the company and he didn't clearly say it was an over the top service, but Viacom would be part of a sports free entertainment pack that would sell for between 10 to $20 a month. And last month, Bloomberg had reported that AMC and Discovery were also potentially part of the bundle. So it's gone from rumor on the Viacom part to Viacom publicly saying, yeah, we're in talks with that. You know something I've never seen in advertising, never seen in marketing? Uh, maybe I'm not doubting that it has existed in some form, but for the first time with this generation incoming, uh, I could actually picture being a smart move is a negative sports campaign, just bagging on sports fans, uh, uh, making them act like all dude bros. and uh, Counter-programming, right? It, exactly. It's just like, hey, man, you know, I, like, I never would have thought that would work, but I, I feel like if there was ever a time in my life, this is well, it. Well, you can play up that cost, like, what? I'm paying how much to watch something I hate? Right. Well, I'm oh, not yeah. doing that. I, I mean, portray it as a bully, you know, hitting you up, taking yeah. your lunch money and so on. Of all the things you could be watching, you want to watch this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead, you should be watching the MTV Music Awards. Yeah, yeah, like a real countercultural icon. <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing. Viacom, uh, Viacom's in trouble. Bakish is is doing his best to kind of right the boats. He's been re trying to repair relationships with traditional companies uh, while he's been going around pulling Viacom off of channels. Like Viacom channels are no longer on the PlayStation View right now. So. Uh, it is clear that Viacom is in damage control mode with its traditional partners, which makes me wonder if this really would be an online service or if it would be something like what Comcast is doing, where it's providing an online version of its service to its Internet customers. Yeah. Uh, man, I, 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 I guess I'm out of steam. This is the sound of what I sound like when I have nothing left to say. Yeah, Sports you're ball. just overwhelmed by the idea of AMC Discovery and Viacom in one package for less than twenty dollars. I mean, what? It's your dream come true. I mean, you're talking to it. There's. So, you, you, I, I mean, on, no, honestly, this is actually pretty telling. It's like because consumers out there are like, ah, another package. 
Yes. Well, and, and you're talking to somebody who, who for, for our jobs, uh, you know, I, I know I'm over redundant. I know I'm overpaying. I, yes, I bought Better Call Saul and then whoopsie realized I'm still paying for Sling or whatever. And it's like uh, another one, but this time it's only 20 extra dollars you're going to be paying. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 I'm sure it'll be great. Sure it'll be great. All right, let's talk about what to watch in our under surveillance segment. Well, my dear, it's all about location, location, location. Under surveillance. Hey, did you hear about that film that uh, everyone booed the Netflix logo at at Cannes Film Festival? Well, it comes out June 28th on Netflix. Korean director Boon, or sorry, Bong Joon Ho, Snowpiercer guy. Shame, shame, uh, on, shame on those people booing Netflix, by the way. Shame on you. Maybe they were just saying boom. No, they, no. they were not. <laughs> June. No. June. Uh, uh, he has adapted the 70s French comic into a movie called Okja. Uh, and it's a, got an ecological message and it's uh, but, got but it's got a complicated one. Though. Cuddly, cuddly animals. And yeah, um, I, I actually I watched the whole trailer on this. It, it It's so surreal and absolutely wonderful because it deals with the very real aspect. The, the idea is that there's a super pig created that mm -hmm. has all the meat in the world, has a small environmental impact, solves all the problems with the uh, with pigs, with, you know, with the porcine meat industry. Um, only it's cute. And because it's cute, uh, now all of a sudden you have the problem of like, well, do we want it? You want to tackle climate change or not? And then uh, uh, I don't know. I love I love this setup. And uh, yeah. I, I thought I enjoyed Snowpiercer when I watched it. I loved it when I saw all the video breakdowns of just how brilliant the direction is and all the little things that I didn't notice when watching it. So I, I'm, I'm very encouraged. Uh, uh, what about you, Fraser? The smarter they are, the better they taste. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's what right. I say about people. Uh, uh, Variety wasn't says there a Netflix Margaret has... Atwood book, Oryx <laughs> and Crick, that came out that was sort of on that same vein, which is like, you know, genetically modified creatures that are fairly smart and fairly delicious. And that's like, you know, like, like it, it takes your uh, carnivoreness and like really sticks it in your face. So. A new definition for the term smart food. <laughs> uh, Variety says Netflix has paid $20 million for the rights to Bubbles, a stop motion animated film about Michael Jackson's pet chimpanzee. <sighs> what? They have. They have done that. Okay. Uh, Netflix is out buying films that can, right? And Netflix doesn't buy films because they think they'll be blockbuster hits. Netflix buys them because they look at their data and they're like, aha, we have a subsection of our audience that will love this, so we will buy it. Yeah, it's just, that's not a documentary. That's just going to be like Curious George and... Well, there's a lot of, a lot be, of big names on documentary. it. Yeah. Taika Waititi from Hunt of the Wilder People and Thorn Ragnarok. Uh, the guy from Mr. Fantastic Fox. Dan Harm Starburns is, is making it. No kidding? Produced by Starburns. Oh, that's right. In fact, now now I hear this, I, I even remember Dan Harmon dropping a hint about it. Um, it's going to be great then. <laughs> yeah, Dan Harmon's in, then it's going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, CBS debuted a trailer for Star Trek Discovery. It is set before the original series of Star Trek, but after Enterprise. The trailer featured quite a bit of Captain Philippa Georgiou, played by Michelle Yeoh. She is the captain of the Shenzhou. The Shenzhou will not be in most episodes because the a series is called Star Trek Discovery, about a ship called Discovery. So we're not seeing a lot of the Discovery. In fact, any in the trailer. Sonequa Martin-Green, however, plays the main character, Commander Michael Burnham, and she is all over the trailer. Uh, she will end up on the Discovery somehow, one expects. Show is now promised to arrive in the fall. Still doesn't have an exact date. Uh, so that Bryce trailer that you just showed, you were just showing, Bryce, is exactly the point where I was like, what? When they're like, hey, I got you a spaceship. And then it's like, enters the atmosphere like that's the way it would work that's the way you would let a person know that they're going to be in command of a new starship and take them out to the middle of a desert there you go there that's yours that's not hers though and she doesn't become captain of a starship that's the other problem with this trailer is it leads everyone watching it to the absolute wrong conclusions <laughs> wah, wah. yeah well uh, anyway, i have a feeling uh, that this is all footage from episode one and it's the only thing they have ready and that's why this trailer was made that way wow well, they, I'll tell you what, man, they're in a very precarious position because um, Star War or Star Trek has, in most of my lifetime, been a robust franchise that had the leeway to make 
long experimental dragged out like we're gonna we're gonna set up this Bajorian Kardashian Kardashian I'll say it uh, thing uh, for a very long time and then we're gonna pay off in in a series not even on the next generation on some other series and all that stuff um, it has none of those ben- benefits right now it is a franchise in flux and it has been it is being made a linchpin of an entire very expensive gamble uh, on CBS's part I I would not want to be working on this project at this time, given mm. all the people you'd have to answer to. Feels like it's, yeah, it feels like it's it's a rocky ride right now. And losing uh, the showrunner. Oh, yeah, when it lost Brian Fuller early on, that was not yeah. good. Uh, Netflix has ordered 10 episodes of Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. We showed you a bit at the top of the show. Well, we showed you a bit of Jim Henson at the top of the show. Uh, they, they don't have a lot of this yet. It's a prequel to the movie. It will feature three Gelflings who discover the horrifying secret behind the Skeksis' power and set off on a rebellion dude i loved the dark tower so so deeply what a what a surreal dark tower is a crystal. really good damn it, book. Yeah, dark tower is a great book by <laughs> stephen king i'm just saying unrelatedly god damn it no yeah I, I, the crystal tower the the the, the uh, crisscross <laughs> and the tower of black um yes i i loved all of those. the stand tower <laughs> uh but but the art design on the dark crystal was uh was fantastic uh finally netflix is developing and producing an english language tv show based on the witcher Yes. Uh, the Polish novels, not the video game that is based on the same Polish novels. And author Andrzej Sapkowski, who has had no involvement in the video games, will serve as creative consultant on the television series. Ooh, that's that's not usually a great sign. It's a great sign if I you've mean, read these books. Okay. They're amazing. Okay. All right. Well, because The Shining was pretty good, too. And then Stephen King fixed it with his made-for-TV movie because, you know, he didn't like that theatrical Hack job. Are you oh so are you objecting to having the author as a creative consultant or to the I, idea of I, racing I, it on the books I, instead I, of the video games? Uh, I, I specifically like the only analogs that I have in my mental file uh, for authors who have not had input on the better known version of a thing and decide to fix it coming in with their version oftentimes are met with less success. I see where you're going. Okay. Right. But it first it comes the one down thing- to Oh, I was going to say, it comes down to one problem here, right? Which is how often are movies and television shows based on books good? George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones, James S. A. Corey's The Expanse. Right? Yeah, yeah, tons, yeah. tons. How often are television shows or movies based on video games good? Uh, Never. Almost ever. Never. Uh, do, do you know what the highest rated uh, Rotten Tomatoes uh, video game movie is? Final Fantasy, The Spirits <laughs> Within. Uh, either that or Laura Croft Tomb Raider. I think those are the top two. Uh, so it's just bad mojo. It's like literally bad luck to say you're basing it on the video game. That's yeah. interesting. So if for and no Sapkowski other reason. Sapkowski isn't fixing anything. Sapkowski, when they made the video game, said, sure, I'll sign here. I'll take a check. But I don't want anything to do with it. You go do your video game because I don't want to be in your way. He's paid no attention to it. When he writes his books, he doesn't. He doesn't pay attention to what's happened in the video games. He doesn't criticize them either, though. He's like, yeah, they're fine. It's not, but that's not, that's not my world. My world's the books. So this, I think, will, I think, I hope, maybe I'm just hoping, will avoid what you're talking about where someone's coming like, let me fix this. Because Sapkowski has taken a very different approach of like, I'm not even going to be involved in that. You just go run with it and do what you want. You guys are great. That's interesting. That puts it into a very narrow subcategory. So I, who knows? Any, of anyone's guess? One. Yeah, yeah. I love right, the let's... video game though. So you know, <laughs> I don't know if that really counts for anything. But I don't ever want a TV show or movie to be made on a video game that I love because that will destroy my love for the thing. Mm. Interesting. All right, let's talk about what we are watching. Starting with you, Fraser. What have you been watching? I'm watching American Gods which has been uh, great, and I'm surprised Brian's lost his his interest on it. I'm really enjoying uh, it. Keep in mind, this is an extraordinary time for television. There's five shows a week that I'm supposed to be keeping up on, and and half of them are ones that are that are spousal share shows and uh, American Gods was that but but my and again I, I don't want to say I have a problem with it because I haven't finished watching it but I fell off just because um I I, I wasn't seeing enough uh, it, it was relying very heavily on the the mystery and the strangeness and the sleepy dreamlike quality of this second reality under reality um d- does does it pick up does it get more concrete or does it stay airy over the last few episodes it stays airy 
for sure. Okay. Uh, um. Uh, so we binge watched Master of None. That's on great. Netflix. Oh, was it good? Oh my god, I haven't laughed out loud as hard as we have in a long time watching this show. There's a, there's a just some really great construction of of television episodes. I think it's, uh, I think it's one of Netflix's best offerings. Is this uh, season one or season two or both? Season two is out now. Season two just dropped. Got it. I'm uh, so sad that Aziz been... has said he's probably not going to do a third season though, because he's he's like, ah, eh, I've I've done all my stories. <laughs> oh, really? Well, then they go. go. Go out while you're ahead, then. It's probably smart. Uh, yeah. And uh, we've been catching up on Mozart in the City, which I had never watched. And then we got Amazon Prime in Canada, so now I'm binging through all the Amazon Prime stuff. And uh, I really enjoy it. It's a good show. Very cool. Uh, Brian, one thing I'll add about Ma American Guy, first of all, 100% agree on Master of None. We tried to slow ourselves down so that we wouldn't get watch it all too fast, and we just couldn't stop. Uh, American Gods this week, Brian, is, I believe, and I may be mistaken, but it is almost entirely made of material not explained in the book. Ooh, okay. That'll be fun for me. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll enjoy that. Uh, I have been watching uh, most of the things they've been talking about. Uh, American Gods, Justified, Better Call Saul, Fargo. I also uh, watched Alien Covenant. I am not a huge Alien fan, so I came to it knowing, you know, not not really comparing it to every other Alien movie, and I had a great time. Uh, it felt very similar to Alien movies and not Prometheus. Now, a lot of people have been dinging it, saying it's got too much Prometheus in it. Uh, it has definitely some connections to Prometheus because David is a character from Prometheus that's in it, but it just felt like an Alien movie to me, and I had a good time. Other people are trashing it, saying it's the worst thing that's ever graced, you know, film ever. Uh, so your mileage may vary on that. The other thing that I spent almost all of last night watching were the first four episodes of Twin Peaks. Uh, if you want to find out everything I think about them, you can subscribe to my other show, Damn Fine Podcast, with uh, Ron Richards, where that's all we talk about is Twin Peaks. But the short version is this series is for people who either really love Twin Peaks and especially the Lynch take on Twin Peaks or people who just really love Lynch's sensibility. And maybe they never got into Twin Peaks, but honestly, you could start right in if you like Lynch and really enjoy it. But it is not for everybody. Interesting. That kind of challenges me. It makes me want to makes me want to give it a try. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, and the other thing I did in preparation for Twin Peaks, is I watched Mulholland Drive, which there's a lot of theories about whether it connects to the Twin Peaks universe in the first four episodes. There was nothing that would directly connect it to Mulholland Drive, but we'll see. Um, Brian, what have you been watching? Man, I got caught up on Fargo, Better Call Saul, and Justified. We'll talk about those in spoiler in time. Also watched the documentary Get Me Roger Stone, which is uh, fascinating. It's fascinating, and there are people who are going to watch it with their fists shaking in the air like oh you Roger Stone you oh why I oughta and it's uh, very very relevant very very recent and very very fascinating super engaging also watch the new uh, Tracy Morgan uh, Netflix special I believe it's the first one since uh, he had his, his terrible crash uh, called Staying Alive and uh, it was uh, it was good but mainly it was just awesome to see him being Tracy Morgan and, uh, and, uh, you know, you could tell it was a getting back to work special. Gotcha. Uh, Bryce, what have you been on the lookout for? Hey, we got a letter from Gary from Illinois. He wanted to tell us about, uh, Nat Geo's genius colon Albert Einstein. He writes, uh, I have a suggestion for what you, for your, what to watch segment. Uh, National Geographic is a new period drama genius, which follows the life of Albert Einstein. The story covers his early years through his time as a patent clerk to his later years as a physicist who developed the theory of relativity. Uh, and of course, there's a backdrop of events surrounding World War II to make things even more interesting. Uh, the show stars Jeffrey Rush as an older Albert Einstein, Johnny Flynn as a young Albert, and Samantha Colley as Mileva Merrick. Uh, the show is very well acted and the settings are beautiful. Uh, best yet, the first episode is free to watch on Amazon Prime, although you will have to pay for additional episodes. The show is worth a watch, says Gary from Illinois. Uh, that's right. This is uh, airing on Nat Geo. You can buy it on Amazon Prime, or if you have a cable authentication, you can watch it on nationalgeographic.com or the Nat Geo TV apps. Uh, and Fraser, you, you've actually been keeping up with this show, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so actually, Nat Geo let me know about it. Uh couple of months ago and I was sort of was on my radar to watch it and they and, you know the episodes have been coming out and I've been able to watch them and they're fantastic I'm really enjoying them uh, 
they are a little light on the science side of it so far. So, you you know, they, they have some interesting ways to try and help you understand as he's trying to piece together relativity. And they do a good job of telling the stories as he goes down some of the um, so sort of some of the dead ends as he tries to understand it, which was neat to see him piece together these ideas one after the other. Uh, but it's very much, it's about a love story. It's very much about his relationship to his wife, to another scientist that he meets and building up to what it was like to be a Jewish scientist in, as the Nazis were taking over Germany and, and things were getting a lot more uncomfortable for him. So if you're looking for a really deep understanding of relativity and things like that, it's not that deep, but if you're looking for a really kind of neat take on Einstein, a biopic, it's, it's great. I mean, I think it's one of the best made biopics of a scientist that I can think of that's ever been done. And so I think, you know, kudos to Nat Geo for doing this. And if they keep this up, you know, there could be other scientists that they could take on and, and to just, you know, to do for them to do a story about uh, scientists, to have Jeffrey Rush be playing the main character. It's all good. Yeah. So definitely give it a give it a watch if you can. Yeah. Folks, if you got something we should be on the lookout for, be sure to email us, courtkillers at gmail.com. Uh, real quickly, uh, I mentioned Damn Fine Podcast, the Twin Peaks uh, series that Ron Richards and I are doing. Uh, there are a number of Twin Peaks podcasts dominating the top 20 of iTunes right now, and I am proud to say that we are one of them. Nice. Last I looked. Uh, so if you're a Twin Peaks fan, and you want to just jump in and start watching along with us. Uh, we did a recap of all the episodes from the two seasons of the television show, Firewalk With Me and the books. You can go back and listen to those if you want. Or you can just jump in now and uh, episodes, uh, parts one and two of the new Return series are up now in our feed. Ron Richards and I will be recording parts three and four reactions tonight. And if you're a Patreon, you'll get those as soon as we're done. Otherwise, they will come when they air on Showtime uh, next week. And then we'll just keep putting them out every week as, as soon as we get them done, first to patrons and then a day later on the feed. So check that out, damnfinepodcast.com. Well, let's move on to the front lines. Yep. Front lines. Vivo launched a new app for its music videos exclusively on Apple TV. Or another way to say it, Vivo has launched a new redesign of its apps, but they only put it out on the Apple TV OS so far. Uh, the new design tries to make it easier to navigate, offers personal recommendations. Uh, how big do you think Vivo could get? Because they're one of the dominant, we've, we've talked about this weird interplay where it's like they're, they're big on YouTube, but of course, if all things being equal, I assume they would rather be YouTube than be big on YouTube, right? Right now, yeah. Right now they have to keep their deal with YouTube and they're desperately trying to grow their homegrown app to the point where they can afford to break that deal. Does so YouTube doesn't make them enough money oh, no. to cover their content back to what we were talking about earlier where you oh, got they do. Yeah, no, YouTube makes them tons of money. But does they, it make them enough money? The, no, they want to keep a larger share of the money is what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Pluto TV not only has a nightly show hosted by Sarah Lane, but also has added library of on-demand movies and TV shows. There are lots of good movies like Silence of the Lambs, The Birdcage, Mad Max, and more. However, they also have ALF, which was part of Comic-Con HQ's library, which also used to employ Sarah Lane. Dun, dun, dun! I see it a pattern, Brian. What, Sarah oh, Lane, okay, okay. launch a new on-demand library, include ALF. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I don't know what it means, but it has happened twice now. It just seems like somebody's on a conspiracy theory kick here. I love it. Can you just watch this free? Yeah. So I could just watch ALF? I mean, not that I would, but I could. Yeah. Hey, man, ain't no I, shame in your ALF. I could yeah, watch, but I could watch Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Ads. It's ad supported. That's fine. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's just free. I don't have to sign up. We've been nothing. talking about Pluto long before they employed Sarah. No, Lane. I know, and like, I've tried, to, but it used to be like play. It was like you know, like like lean back and watch a bunch of uh, right, and it's still Vsauce videos, right? But yep. Hmm. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dish is the first television service to make its hardware compatible with Amazon voice services. That means you can talk to Amazon Echo's assistant and have it do things like change the channel to Bravo or rewind 30 seconds. All you have to do is pair up the Dish TV skill 
from the Amazon Voice Services Skills Store and then pair it with your dish hopper. Awesome. Uh, man, I can't pronounce it. Paolo Sorrentino of the Young Pope, did I say it right? Is working yeah. on a new series called, drumroll please, The New Pope. No idea who it'll be or how it will relate to the Young Pope. It goes into production late 2018. No comment on whether or not it is a stolen copy of a script Justin and I wrote starring Andrew Dice Clay as the world's most unlikely pope. He refuses to acknowledge your contribution to this. It's, uh, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. As of yet. He Young hasn't pope, denied it either. New Pope. <laughs> there are two different series. Okay. Just try to get that in my head. Young Pope. New Pope. Epic's new cast feature in its app now supports Fire TV. So from the Epic's app, you can cast to your Fire TV devices. Uh, and, of course, there's now an Epic's app for the Fire TV as well if you don't want to do the casting. And also YouTube TV just added AirPlay to support its app. That means if you're a YouTube TV subscriber, you can now use an Apple TV to stream your viewing to a TV. Previously, you could only do it through Chromecast. See, it's easy to cut the cord. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... Now, now you've got one more. I mean, what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say, like, even as I read, like, this is universally a good thing. This is a substantial increase to the quality of, of service that for people. And even as I'm saying it, it's like, you can't Jeep drop the doobie doo and fling flong to the blurdy yard. And then it's on your TV. Couldn't be simple. I got nothing to add to any of this stuff. Just <laughs> like, I'm it's just a, like staring over the border. If you, if you use the device and or the service, you're, this is good for you to know. Correct, correct. And, That's and about it. Plug those things together. But also, yeah. it just makes me very aware of of why people, why a certain older demographic might might be less interested in cutting. Well, yeah, the cord that's what this yet. whole show is documenting: is that that move from it's all Netflix to we've got choices to it's still not easy to the one day when we could finally go like. Mm. All we have left to talk about is what to watch because watching it's easy now. That's right, and it's Apparently, crazy. We, we're, we should get Google Home in Canada this summer. Nice. Yeah. New Pope, Young Pope, Classic Pope. That would be the next one. Oh, Pope, uh, pope Classic. Pope Classic. Crystal Pope. Let's move on Crystal to Pope. from the front. <laughs> Diet Pope. Dr. <Zero>. Pope. <laughs> Uh, hey, Robbie Stone wrote in. New boss here, he says. Thanks, boss. Uh, <laughs> after listening to the show and realizing I could switch to PlayStation View and still watch sports, I decided to make the leap. After an hour on the phone and an hour in the Comcast office, I'm now saving $95 a month oh. and still watching everything I was before. Thank you for everything you do. Well, it's glad to hear it, Robbie. Cherry Pope Zero. <laughs> been, been sitting on that one for a while. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Steve Pope. from Too Much Scrolling wrote in saying, Brian's Cable Fig Leaf is showing. Hulu subscribers who add on Showtime can authenticate with their Hulu credentials on Showtime's Anytime app and see live Showtime. Twin Peaks is not only uh, 21st century entertainment, it's being viewed in 21st century ways. Thank you very much, Steve. Ah, uh, yeah. No, that's that's excellent. Uh, hey, Cord Killers team, says Mitch. That PBS Kids streaming stick sounds incredible. I just messaged it to my wife, and her immediate response is, that would be fantastic in the car. Our van has an in-car entertainment system with an HDMI port. The preloaded content means we wouldn't have to stream it and use phone data on a long drive. We'll get one, test it as soon as cash flow allows. Uh, Mitch, if you do, write in and let us know how your test goes. We'd love to hear. Yeah, no, it looks Feels fantastic. Feels like this will tear open a, the fabric of the cosmos here to watch TV from a car in your car. Watch TV. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> because just as the entertainment is in your car, the entertainment lives in that little car, the little race car filled with all those, those Sesame impossible. Streets. Yeah, yeah. I think I think this is a very dangerous proposition. <laughs> uh, Cole writes in saying, hey, guys, been a longtime listener and love the show. Finally signed up to support the show via Patreon. By the way, 126. I'm Ooh. probably the furthest thing from a cord cutter. I have accounts with DirecTV at home, Xfinity X1 at a rental property, where I also have my man cave and Dish Network at our lake house. Yep, I've got a problem apparently not with three properties your show does a great job keeping me informed of what's going on and i get a lot of value from it i'm i'm glad i've signed on with patreon and hope to remain a supporter for a long time need to listen to spoiler in time 170 to hear what brian thinks of american gods i dropped hbo at the lake house to sign with stars to watch this i'm not sure what to think loving the handmaid's tale on hulu thanks for the heads up keep up the good work your Welcome. newest boss cole thank you very much cole can't thank, thank you, you enough 
Yeah, no, this this is uh, proof positive, folks, that even you folks who have cable subscriptions or three cable subscriptions yeah. uh, can still get something out of the show. Uh, finally, uh, Aaron wrote in with a uh, good long explanation, and we'll have that in our show notes, of how he was able to cut his direct TV cable, and he was worried about the retention thing. So he informed the first agents that he needed to cancel the service because he switched to his local cable provider when they offered him a great deal. This was a little white lie, but I wanted to have a firm reason for canceling and use the past tense to clarify that the decision was already made. Uh, he had to tell him, like, I don't know how much we're paying. My wife made the deal. I just want to cancel. Another life hack that he used during this whole thing was making sure he was smiling, even though he was on the phone, when he said anything to the customer service agent so that he sounded happy, right? And that that helps just smooth the waters. But Brian, you were saying a, a bunch of the emails we got of people saying how they deal with cancellations uh, said something about lying. Yeah, no, uh, uh, as a percentage, and I actually did the math on this, um, we got so many responses. Everybody, thank you for everybody who suggested ways to get off the phone quickly and, and make un, uncabling very easy. Uh, I did a tally, and uh, of those that had suggestions that involved lying, they were, uh, hold on, 100% of the suggestions not one person <laughs> suggested anything other Wait, than lying. Wait, hold on. Show your map. <laughs> All of them equals 100. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, yeah, dude, uh, that was that was kind of funny to me uh, because, like, it never even occurred to me to well, – I mean, I guess it occurred to me. You could lie. Whatever. Who cares? You, the host of Scam School? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I thought it was curious to figure out a way to navigate those waters without ever lying. And uh, – uh, that's what I thought was interesting. But apparently a lot of people say like, uh, no, in fact, if you're going to lie, I say lie outrageously. Just say, uh, oh, they were devoured in the great uh, ascension. I, I have adopted a new belief system that abjures television. <laughs> yes. Oh, and as far as the smiling on the phone, please do that. Look, love the cog, but hate the machine. Right. I go. mean, hate the machine, but love the cog. It's yeah. not their fault. Then they're, they're just trying to make money, put food on the table. And that and, and that doesn't mean when we say Fraser Kane is a content machine that we don't love Fraser Kane. Oh, no, I, I act. I mean, I like I like his amygdala. That's the one cog I yeah, love. Man. I'm deeply in love with the rest Best of the machine cog. terrifies me. Best amygdala in the business, <laughs> Fraser. Uh, hey, man, where can where can people see so much more of your lovely, lovely content? Uh, well, <clears throat> obviously I do astronomy cast. I do the, my YouTube channel, but the, that right there, that thing right there, the go back up price, the Mars project humans to Mars. That thing there is our new video. We just released it today. I'm especially proud of this. So actually it's the YouTube video that we did. There you go. That one, you're probably going to get an ad. Oh no, you don't. Cause you're on YouTube red. We, uh, it's jam packed full of fun information about this crazy plan that uh, that Werner von Braun had come up with on how to send humans to Mars, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so that's a collaboration with me and uh, Amy Shearer Title, and uh, super fun. So we've been doing that. Uh, man, I don't know, too many projects. So go to Universe Today, go to uh, our YouTube channel, and enjoy. UniverseToday.com, YouTube.com slash Universe Today, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I may Thanks. be appearing in someone else's television show sometime soon maybe mm, hmm. 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 So, but, uh, you're you're a modern man fraser I, I, <laughs> that's all i have to say about that uh thank you again man it's good to have you back on the show hey always a pleasure our website is courtkillers.com our email address is courtkillers at gmail.com we're live on diamondclub.tv mondays at 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific i'd like to buy the world a pope <laughs> oh you beat me to it <laughs> hey guys Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our $5 patrons who keep us loud, live, and independent. You guys make Court Killers the production that it is. Your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts. And if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are, you can go to patreon.com slash court killers. You'll need to do more than just go there, though. You'll have to sign up and, you know, pledge an amount. But Unless you just want to see who they are. Well, I mean, you can gawk. That's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, let's go. Up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>